Father, 
Come on, don't stop worshiping with us. Amen. Hallelujah.
center for the last three weeks. And every time I walk in there, all I can do is pray and tell God, thank you. And as I walk in there, I begin to pray for everybody that's in there. On last Monday when I was walking in, a lady tapped me on the shoulder. And she turned around and she looked at me and I looked at her. She said, you praying for everybody in here. I said, yes, ma'am, because I'm not a selfish person. In order for pastor to get a healing, I got to pray for everybody else. Come on, somebody. So listen, God has gave us good strength. He's keeping us healthy. And we want to come and sit down on God like he owes us something. But this morning, I come to tell you, we owe God all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. Amen. I can't help but to give him praise.
want to thank all of you, our deacons, our trustees, and thank you uh, to our media ministry. Thank you for our security. Thank you all so much for taking the temperatures as we, amen, make our way, amen, into the house of prayer. Amen. How many know God is a good God? Mighty, good God. Amen. Amen. You won't leave it like you came in Jesus' name. You won't leave it like you came in Jesus' name. You won't leave it like you came. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks for changing. You won't need it like you came. In Jesus' name. I love you. 
was the Sabbath. I want you to go with me, look at your neighbor, and don't be scared of them. And tell your neighbor, I ain't scared. We happen to know God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. I want to take this from uh, the second verse of my text, the second verse, amen. It says, now there was at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew term, a tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. I want you to look at somebody and stay with us this morning and say, neighbor, Say, oh neighbor, oh, neighbor. The, subject the subject is entitled, yeah. get, off get off the porch. Get off, get off the porch. My brothers and sisters, the gospel according to John has 21 chapters. The book has 878 verses. The book also has 19,099 words. The gospel according to John present Jesus as the eternal word of God who became a human being and lived amongst us. As the book itself says that Jesus is the son of the living God. That's something to shout about. Jesus is the son of the living God. It lets us know that our God we serve is not dead. The God we serve is yet alive. How you know, again, I often say, people say they can feel him in their hands and they can feel him in their feet and they can feel him all over them. That's well and good. Amen. But he has to be felt in your heart. Can I get a witness in here? Uh, that's why it is so easy to cuss folk out because he's just in your hands and in your feet. But if you get in your heart, amen, he can guide you and lead you into all truth. He's the son of the living God. And if God is alive and well, then you and I as Christians, as believers, ought to be alive also. Because the Bible says that we are lively from that's built up as a spiritual house in the Lord. So therefore, if God is alive and we serve the living God, that means every now and then, clap it out and get in your hands, that means every now and then, shout it out and get in your feet, that means every now and then, joy out and get in your tongue, you are not mind giving him praise, giving him glory. That's why I have problem with folk that come up in the house of the living God and sit there all docile, sit there like God owe oh, you a favor, sit there like you are so all of that and a bag of chips, sit there like you woke yourself up this morning, sit there like you started your own self on your way with him and had nothing. Oh, for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Can I get a witness in here? Uh, so we serve a living God. Our God is not dead. You ought to tell somebody he's not dead. He's yet alive. That's why when you come up in the house of the living God, you ought to come with shouting on your tongue. You ought to come with joy in your heart. No worry about what nobody else thinks or say about you because when you come up in God's house, 
house, you ought to say, baby, I ain't thinking about you. I'm coming in the house of the living God because what he's done for me, I know it with my mama, I know it with my daddy, I know it with my sister, I know it with my brother. I know if it had not been for the Lord, I would have lost my mind a long time ago. If it had not been for the Lord, I would have gave up through in the tower and went somewhere and got a fifth of liquor. But thanks be to God, it was Jesus on my side. If it had not been for the Lord, I would have been somewhere rolling up a joint, smoking it. Now I ain't saying nothing in here. If it had not been for the Lord, I would have went cuckoo for cocoa pops. But thanks be But thanks be to God, I serve a living God. My God is not dead. He's yet alive. I got a short message. I promise you. I ain't even got in the text yet. I'm just talking about my living God. I ain't hit the surface yet. I'm talking about the living God. The God that we serve is yet alive. Can I get a witness in there? He's the son of the living God. And that through their faith in him that they might have life. Ah, my brothers and sisters, get off the porch. Get off the porch. Uh, when I was a lad of a boy, there in uh, Lakeland, Florida, mm -hmm. in the projects, mm -hmm. I, I live in a two-story house. Yeah. I lived in the projects, mm -hmm. the hood. Mm -hmm. We had a little porch. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a back porch and a front porch. Mm -hmm. The front porch was bigger. In the back porch. And mama would tell us, don't leave off the porch. Because if you leave the porch, <laughs> it's going to be trouble. Even in the projects, uh, when we wanted to fight somebody, we tell them, come off the porch. <laughs> because we know it was a thing just to go on somebody else's porch. So, most time folk talk trash. <laughs> on the porch. But because I know you can't get to me. As long as I stay. Lord, help me this place on the porch. Uh, but I'm going to talk about get off the porch. Because here the waters are troubled. Uh, but you must get in. There is no healing, no deliverance, no victory, and no power on the porch. Uh, waiting for the moving of the water. Mm -hmm. Waiting for instant healing, instant blessings, and instant transformation mm -hmm. uh, on the porch. There are a multitude of Christians today who, who, who spiritually speaking are on the porch. Yeah, yeah, they are not doing anything for God. They're watching, they're judging, and they're criticizing. Uh, they know how it should be done. But, my brothers and sisters, they are not doing anything. Uh, uh, my brothers and sisters, here it is. Uh, the porch uh, is a gathering place. Mm, when I was a lad, a boy, I heard folks say birds of a feather flock together. Uh, 
if some folk uh, didn't have sickness, they wouldn't have anything to talk about. Uh, have you ever ran across somebody every time you see them, something always, what, what grandma you sick, always ailing them? Every time you see them, something always wrong with them. You ask them, how you doing? Oh, child, I'm telling you, I'm sure not doing good today. You know, I got a headache. And the next week you see them, how you doing? Oh, child, you know, I had to go to the doctor. Yeah, I stomped my toe. Hey, the next time you see them again, oh, child, you know, I ain't feeling good. I ain't slept all night. You always talk my hug. You know, the devil is showing his busy. We know the devil is busy. But what is God doing? And hey, what the devil's doing? And all of that trying to get your attention to remind you, hello, remember me? I'm the one that woke you this morning. I'm the one that started you on your way. Hello, stop talking about what the devil's doing and what God talking about what God is doing. Always complaining. If you don't have no problems in your life, you ain't got nothing to talk about. The reason why you ain't got nothing to talk about, can I tell you, is because you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins. The reason you ain't got no Jesus about because you don't know really what he's done for you. Lord, help me in this place. Uh, the Bible says the angel came down at a certain season and troubled up the wall. This is what the text says. Whosoever first stepped in was healed of whatever disease he had. Uh, uh, without This question Jesus asked the man, will thou be made whole? You have to decide before you decide. Okay. Uh, Jesus asked him, will thou be made whole? Because I come to the question, and that's a good question, that's a good question. Will thou be made whole? You have to decide to decide. If you want to be made whole, some folk want to stay sick. Because then they got something to always complain about. Then they always got a pity party. Want somebody to join in their pity party with No, baby, I want to be well. I, I don't want no, I mean, you got to have a pity party with me. I want to know, amen, when they see me, they can see me dancing. When they see me, they can see me giving them praise. You ain't got to see me walking around with my head. We got a White House. 
that's messed up. Y'all ain't saying that here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, but, but you got to decide. To decide if you want to be made whole. Now, it's up to you to stay in the condition that you're in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nobody going to twist your hand to come out of that condition. It's up to you. You have to decide. Do you want to come off the porch? Do you want to uh, change your surroundings? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, change your sur association with accommodations uh, which, which accommodate your attitude or your problems. Mm. Uh, change your association which uh, accommodate your attitude and your problems. Some folk you hang around, you wonder why you act like them. <laughs> have you ever have you ever got around folk that's just crazy? Y'all can't y'all don't know y'all don't tell you. And, and, and then you wonder why, why am I talking like I, I have never talked like this before? And here I am, I can crowd, I can just like this. And then some motherfucker remind you, child, you've been hanging around them too long, you act just like you gotta change your Can I get a witness in here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he says, no man to put me in. Tell somebody saying, I ain't got nobody to put me in. One of the greatest uh, excuses in the church, I don't have anyone uh, to give it to me. I, if, if, if they would bring it to me, then this is what folks say, I'll take it. Uh, then we have the best to say better late than never. <laughs> Just say ouch. Oh, my. Oh, my pastor used to say, if you can't say amen, say oh my. Amen. That's what we have the excuse to say better late than never. Can I get a witness here? This is one of the worst plagues in the church. This attitude, uh, that same, that psalm is better than none. Mm. And better late than never. It is, uh, it has uh, produced a real spiritual of indifference. And in the sensitivity. There is, watch this here. There is an uh, and there is an extension of God's presence. Let me say it again. There is an extension of God's presence and power that can never be experienced by those people because they always got to say better late than never and because that's your attitude you never get to experience God's extension oh Lord help me in this place you never get to experience, experience his presence his power and experience uh, what God really has because your attitude is, I'm here. Yeah. That's right. Yes, <laughs> your attitude says, uh, I know I'm late. <laughs> you, you ought to be glad I'm here. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah. know I'm telling the truth. God. I'm talking to some of you right now. Yeah, yeah, that's something that's been your attitude. So you gotta change. This glory is uh, revealed from uh, those who are first in the pool. This glory is revealed uh, for those who are first in the pool, those who live towards God with a spirit of urgency. Woo. 
you know, there was a time, I got to get out here, I told y'all this one when you know. Uh, there was a time, there was a great urgency to get to church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You remember when you first got saved? You remember you first joined the church? I remember when I first got saved. I remember when I first joined the church. Oh, man, when the church, amen, doors was open, I was there. I had an urgency to get there. I had a hunger and a thirst to get there. Amen. You couldn't do that. I was I opened up the church. I closed the church. Amen. And I was having a good time uh, in the church of uh, the importance uh, because we've lost that urgency. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, we've lost that. We've lost that hunger. Yes, sir. We've lost that thirst for the church. Somebody say, well, you know it's coronavirus. Going on preach up. This coronavirus in the maze and how we can go to Walmart. And coronavirus is still out there. It's amazing how we can go to the general dollar and corona is still out there. It's amazing how we can go to work with all them folk and corona is still out there. Isn't it amazing we can do what we want to do? Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. The Bible says this. Seek ye first. The kingdom of God. And then everything else will be added unto you. And then the Bible says a certain season. Somebody say certain season. Uh, there is a season for everything and a time to every purpose under the heavens. If we are not spiritually in tune with God, this is what I find out, thick and small. If we're not spiritually in tune with God, we can miss the greatest season of invitation that the church has ever known. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ooh, God help me now. Somebody just missed out. If we just get in tune with God, we can get all of the benefits, we can get all of the blessings. But what is happening in the church, uh, if we are not uh, spiritually in tune with God, uh, my brothers and sisters, we can miss the greatest season of the visitation of our lives. If you don't believe me, come here. There was five wise, five foolish, and the Bible said the five that was wise, the Bible says uh, that they was in tune <laughs> because of what happened was uh, they took enough oil in their vessels and those that was foolish didn't take enough and the Bible says those that was uh, uh, foolish ran out of oil and said to those that was wise give us some and they said no we only have enough for ourselves because you got to learn how to prepare for the visitation you got to learn how to prepare to meet Jesus you got to learn how to prepare with the spirit of God get in tune with what God is saying get in tune with God is trying to take us y'all ain't saying nothing in here somebody in place with the world get in tune with what God is doing in your house in your family get in tune we ain't just doing it in the church he's doing it in your house the Bible says oh y'all ain't spoken to me in here you got the first get your house to come when you get your house together, it's easy to come into church and give it glory. When you get the Bible says it starts at the house first, and then it's easy to come and give God glory in the church. See, if you ain't never praising him in your house, then you come up in here and you hinder everything else from us, and you crippling us because you ain't praised him all week, you ain't gave him thanks all week, and now you come in here mad with lemons all in your face like you've been sucking on lemons and like you've been sucking on y'all ain't saying that here hot sauce all week long and you ain't gave God praise all week you ain't telling him thank you for letting you put shoes on your feet you ain't telling him thank you for putting bread on the table you ain't told him thank you for letting you see another days and you are bitter you are depressed you are oh, can we just suck it up now because you are bitter don't come up in here you give him praise at home Charity begins at home. I feel like preaching. 
and then spreads abroad. Ooh. Mm. Ah. And so, so, uh, the visitation of the church has ever known. The man says, uh, stepping in. When I am stepping in, someone stepped before me. Lord, I got to go, y'all. I, I promise all what I'm saying ain't on this, on this path. I, he just emailed me some stuff, y'all. I, I don't know why he doesn't do me like that. Uh, uh, there comes a time when singing about it isn't enough. Huh? Really? Preaching about it isn't enough. Shouting about it isn't enough. Oh, we can't shout and dance and preach about all the great things that God has done and never touch what he's doing. Yes, we, 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 can, we, can, we, can, we can we can stay on the porch and talk about all the great revivals of the past and how God manifests his glory or we can get off the porch and step in. To this man, when the Bible says, uh, Reverend Carton, there was a multitude <laughs> of impotent people. Why Jesus points this man? He could have went to anybody. There's a whole lot of folk, but they're sick, halting, withered. But the Bible says. He approached this man. My question, why, Jesus, did you just go to one man? You said you have no respect a person. Okay, okay, y'all mind me. I, I talk to Jesus like this. Uh, you, you, you said you, 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 you have no respect of person. The man said, why I'm coming? I need you to catch it. I'm getting out of here now. Yeah. This is the key to transformation in your life. Mm -hmm. It's the continually coming. It's in the text. I'm not making it up. <laughs> he, he kept coming for Is, uh, we don't get it right then and we 
stop coming. We don't get it when we want it and we give up and quit. But I stopped at a certain notice to somebody. You got to keep on coming. He may not come when you want him, but if you keep on coming, he's always on time. Oh, I feel like I feel a preaching in me, y'all. Y'all mm, forgive me. I feel all right. Touch your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Don't touch him. Look at him. If you sin by, if you sin by lie, don't fold. Touch him. And say, keep on coming. Uh, say, you got to keep moving forward. Uh, say, you got to keep on coming because the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, uh, but it's given to those uh, who endure it until Wait a minute, not yet. Let me finish, y'all. Let, let me finish. I, 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 I promise you, I promise you, I'm, 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 I'm a toenail away. Mm. Got to keep on coming. Keep on coming to the house of God. Keep on coming to the hour of prayer. Keep on coming to Bible study. Keep on coming to Sunday morning worship. Keep on coming to the word of God. Jesus says uh, that the words that I speak unto thee are spirit and they are life. My brothers and sisters, there is a miracle power in the word. And there is saving power in the word. Healing power and transforming power in the word. Now we can get here, boys, and get out of here. But you got to be willing to be changed. You got to be willing to make up in your mind. For God I live and for God I'll die. You got to be willing to keep on coming. You got to be willing to put an effort on. Receive his healing. He received his 
keep it courage. Thank you everyone for coming. God bless you. 